All right, guys, so here we're working with an eyelet screw here that's screwed into a wall, and we have two external forces acting on this eyelet screw. So here you can see of F1 of 250 newtons, and it's acting uh, kind of to the uh, first quadrant of 30 degrees to the right of the y-axis, or clockwise from the y-axis. And then the other force, F2, is uh, 375 newtons, and that's 45 degrees below the x-axis, below the positive x-axis. So we're tasked to find the resultant force, or the net force that comes out of these two forces being added up, which is F1 plus F2, as well as the direction of that force, so it would probably be somewhere in this direction here, uh, north or south of X, we'll have to figure that out. So the easiest way to kind of go about this is to break down these forces into X and Y components. So for force 1, we'll have F1, something like that, and we have 250 newtons. Now, is this going left or right? Well, it's going to the right, and then as it's going up or down, it's going up. So we'll have an arrow that points to the right, and then an arrow that points upwards. And this here is going to be the X, and this here is going to be the Y. Um, now, we have an angle of attack here from the, just above the positive X axis, right? So it'd be essentially this angle right over here. And I'm going to call that angle alpha. So how do you find this angle angle alpha? So this is just simple trigonometry, uh, just a refresher in case if you don't remember from Sokotoa. Basically, uh, what you have is the sine of an angle equals the opposite over hypotenuse, cosine of an angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and the tangent of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. So to find this x here, so actually we'll, we'll, let's just let's just do it this way. So we'll just say that sine alpha sine alpha equals what equals opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite of alpha is going to be y. So we'll have y over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is going to be this 250 newtons. So over 250. And now if you just rearrange this and solve for y, you're going to have that y equals 250 sine alpha. Now likewise, for the x, we're going to have cosine We'll have cosine alpha, again, cosine alpha equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent here is going to be what touches this angle, which is over here, the x. So we'll have x equals x over 250. And rearrange for x, and you'll have that 250, or sorry, um, we'll say x, x equals 250 cosine alpha. Now, to make a quick substitution for alpha, for what the actual numeric value is, well, if we know that this here is 90 degrees from the x to the y, and we have 30 degrees taken right off the bat, then this must be equal to 60 degrees, right? So I'm going to go ahead and make that substitution now over here. So we have uh, 60 degrees here and 60 degrees here as well. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, not radians. And then you can solve this for a numeric value, both for the x and y. Personally, I'm just going to keep it as the algebraic expression, and then I'll just punch in all the numbers at the end uh, when I do the resultant forces. All right, so that was force number one. Here is the uh, y1 and x1 for force number one, now for force two. So we'll call this here, again, f1, all kind of over here. All right, so now we're halfway there. Now we need to find f2s, x and y components. So for F2, once again, we'll draw another triangle. So we have that th uh, F2 is 375 newtons in some sort of direction like that. And uh, it goes to the right. And then it goes downwards. So we'll draw a couple of arrows, one to the right, and one pointing downwards. Always add your vectors uh, tip to tail. And again, here we would have an X and here we would have a Y component. Um, and again, this was a 375 newton force. 375 newtons. All right, and uh, we're also told the angle here is 45 degrees. Just 45 degrees. Um, and I guess we could have called that beta if we wanted to. Um, but anyways, um, over here we have, we'll have sine of 45 degrees. It's from Sokotoa. Again, sine of the angle, 45 degrees, equals, as you can see right over here, uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be the opposite is going to be the y over the hypotenuse of 375, and then the cosine of the 45 is going to equal the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the adjacent would just be whatever touches that angle, which is the x, 
to the x over the 375. And if you rearrange for the x and y, you'll have that y equals 375 sine 45, and then x equals 375 cosine 45. And again, these are both in degrees. So now that I have my uh, vectors broken down into vectors that are uh, collinear with each other, such as this y vector and this y vector, and then this x vector and this x vector, now I can finally add them up. So we'll start with the sum of the forces uh, in the, let's just do the x direction first. So for the x direction, and we're going to say that anything to the right is positive. So we'll say that this is our sign convention. Anything to the right is positive. Um, so the first force we had was x1, so x1 was 250 cosine 60 degrees. And while we're at a point, well, if you look over here, it pointed to the right. So we'll just keep that as a positive number. And then the next thing we had was, we'll just add um, 375 cosine 45 degrees. And that's just from x2 over here. And well, where did it point? Well, it pointed also to the right, so we'll keep that positive. And by the way, these, these should have had subscripts of y2 and x2. So I apologize for that. Um, and so yeah, so now we just have our sum of the forces in the x direction. And if you sum it up, you'll have that your resultant x force, not your resultant force, but your resultant x force, is 390.17 newtons. And that would be to the right. So we'll just underline that. And now again, we'll do the sum of the forces. And this time we're going to do it in the y direction. And we'll say that anything that goes vertical is going to be positive, And anything that goes down is going to be negative. That's just our sign convention for the x and y that we typically use. Um, so in this case, we have a y1 of 250 sine 60. Remember, we calculated that over here. And well, what direction does it point? Well, it points upwards, so we'll keep it positive. And now the next force we have that we have to add or subtract is this force over here, which is um, y2 of 375 sine 45. But notice that it points downwards, so we're actually going to be subtracting that. So we'll do minus 375 uh, sine 45 degrees. And if you plug this into your calculator, you'll have a resultant y force of negative 48.66 newtons. And of course, because it's negative, that means that the direction is pointing downward. So now I'm going to make a resultant triangle, a resultant force triangle, because we have an x, uh, a resultant x force of 390.17, so something like that. And again, this is 390.17 newtons. And then we have another force of negative 48.66, which points downward, so it's going to be something like this. So negative 48.66 newtons. And your resultant force, therefore, should be something like this. And this would be your resultant force. And then this would be your angle, actually. Your angle will call that theta. And if you remember just some simple math, the Pythagorean theorem of the hypotenuse, or fr, equals the square root of 390.17 squared plus negative 48.66 squared. And you'll find your hypotenuse, which equals 393.19 newtons. And so now um, we need to find our direction. So I'm going to go back to using Sokotoa here. So we've used the sine and cosine here, but now we'll use the tangent here. Um, so tangent equals opposite over adjacent, right? So over here, we have the adjacent as, neg uh, sorry, the opposite as negative 48.66 and the adjacent as 390.17. So therefore, what I can say is that the tangent of the angle theta equals, again, the opposite over adjacent. The opposite is negative 48.66 divided by the adjacent of 390.17. And now we just have to undo this tangent function. So to do that, we'll take the inverse tangent, but remember what you do to one side, you must do to the other side. So we'll have that tangent minus one, or the inverse tangent, of 
tan theta equals tan minus 1, or again, inverse tangent, of this whole function over here of negative 48.66 over 390.17. And therefore, we can cancel out our tangent function here, and we're going to be left with that theta, or the angle, equals negative 7.11 degrees. And all that that negative sign really implies is that instead of being um, in this direction of the x-axis, we're actually talking this direction of the x-axis. Um, so again, this would be positive and this would be negative. And that makes sense because this uh, resultant force is pointing below the x-axis. However, um, this, is, this is not our final answer because the problem statement does ask for this angle to be measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So in other words, what we're looking for is going to be this right over here, is this angle that's going to look something like this. So if we have our resultant force, something like that, then that red angle, that circled angle, is going to be kind of what we're looking for here. And so we kind of already have that answer, actually. Um, so I'll change colors again. So if you know that you have 90 degrees here, and then in the first quadrant, 90 degrees in the second quadrant, and then 90 degrees in the third quadrant, well, what's left of the fourth? The fourth quadrant would be 90 degrees, except you're going to subtract pretty much this amount here. And if you remember, that amount is just this 7.11 degrees. So then in this quadrant, you have 90 minus 7.11 degrees which equals 82.89 degrees. Now we just have to add quadrant one, two, and three to make this whole, and you'll have that theta equals 90 from the first quadrant plus 90 from the second quadrant plus 90 from the third quadrant, and then again from the fourth quadrant, we determined that we're going to be using 82.89 degrees of that quadrant. Now you sum all these up, and you'll have 352 0.89 degrees is the angle from the positive x-axis counterclockwise.